Hello, friends. Welcome to the Motivation Broadcast here in beautiful Savannah, Georgia. This is the motivational 10-minute ticker for this week. I've been gone for a minute, but as the Father would have it, I am back and I want to share something with you this morning. Today, we're going to be speaking about the topic of fruit inspection. You know, we need more people, more than ever, in these last days to do fruit inspection. You know, when I call on fruit inspection, I'm talking about the true called and chosen family of believers, the true called and chosen members of the called and out assembly, the body of Hamashiach or the body of Christ, the true church, not the fictitious church or what I like to call the demon nations or denominations on the corners, but the actual called and chosen assembly. It's more needed now than ever before, especially in these end times when we've mixed such a gray, worldly, murky, milky color of, of what a true Christian is, you know, um, and needs to be black and white like the scriptures have always taught, like the son Yahushua or the son, which you may refer to as Jesus, you know, those of you who still respectfully tried to use that word, you know, that false name, may refer to as, it's time for us to stand up and do some fruit inspection because now we have these false allegations coming out against those that are truly called and chosen. And then we have the serious allegations coming out on the false religious teachers. And it seems like the false religious teachers are getting more of the support than the true called out and chosen called pastors, called ministers, called preachers that are out here among us today. So I want to talk about fruit inspection, inspecting the fruit. Okay. I'm going to be coming from the book of Matthew in chapter seven here in a minute, but I just want to lay a little foundation. Number one, let's stop talking about unrighteous judgment. You know, a lot of those that are guilty that are walking out here and living among these religious institutions, they always cry out, you cannot judge me. I did a broadcast a few months ago about righteous judgment. You know, the scripture does not teach us not to judge, but it teaches us not to judge unrighteously. So there is such thing as a righteous judgment. You can read that if you read the correct version of it in Matthew chapter 7. You can also see it in 1 Corinthians over there where Paul is giving charge to the church at Corinth how they should judge the small matters among the members. So we are clearly directed to make righteous judgments according to the scriptures. So don't believe the falsehoods out there that we're not the judge or you cannot judge me. That is incorrect. We of the true called and chosen assembly of the Ecclesia, the Most High, we must be able to judge and make righteous judgments in order to maintain the purity of the kingdom and the right standing of the kingdom, along with our leader, our follower of the church, the only true church, Yahushua HaMashiach, okay? So let's read from Matthew chapter 7, and I'm going to start at verse 15 talking about fruit inspections. We need fruit inspectors today. Here we go. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You know, they are talking about here in the scripture that false prophets come to you looking just like the real thing. They speak the right words. They say the right words. They quote the right verses. They may not be able to expound in depth, but they do it just enough to pull the wool over the unsuspecting member's eyes, okay? It says, beware of the false prophets. Not beware of the prophet, beware of the false prophet. Look at 16. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Look at that. Ye shall know them by their fruit. What is the fruit of any tree? What is the fruit of any plant? What is the fruit of any womb? It is the nature of that womb. It is the manifestation of that actual plant in its purest form. In order for a orange tree to produce a good fruit or a ripe orange, it must be good from the root all the way out to the fruit. And the fruit is the glory of that tree. You know, it's the same way for us that are truly called and chosen in the body. If we are going to be the fruit, 
of the spiritual kingdom, then we are have to, we have to bear witness to the fruit that actually produced us. That means it pro will produce after our kind, and we are have been produced after what has produced us, which would be the Most High. So you cannot waver. You cannot be on the on the fence. You can't produce over here and over there. You have to produce after your own kind. And the scripture says here in verse 16, ye shall know them by their fruits, or those that are lost shall know us, the true called and chosen, by our fruits that we bear, by our nation, I mean our, our uh, nature, or by our actions. They will know us, okay? Let's read the rest of that. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? That's the question. In other words, do they gather the grapes with the thorns? Do they gather the figs with the, the thistles, the, the stuff that we do not they do not need? No, we need the grapes. We need the fruit, the production. We need the figs. We don't need the stuff that needs to be thrown away. Okay? We don't need the stuff that needs to be thrown away. So what he's saying is that when you have all these things together, when you have the grapes and the thorns, you're looking at something that is not bearing the fruit that is worthy of the kingdom. Glory be to his name. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? What I'm saying is that fruit has to be based on the production after its own kind in its purest form. And in this case, we're talking about the most high. All right. Look at verse 17. Every excuse me. Even so, every good tree. Now, listen to this. Now, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Did you see that? The word sometimes isn't in there. It does not say every, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit sometimes. Doesn't say that. Okay. It says, e even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. That means if the tree is good, then what it produces is going to be good. Now, hold on. You may say, well, you know, um, I fall sometimes or sometimes I fall short. Uh, sometimes I commit sin or sometimes I do sin by omission or unintentional. All right. Listen, it's not speaking on those terms. OK, if you fall, get up and keep walking, get up and keep walking and know that you're pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high call. You're pressing towards the mark. OK, that's the important part here. Not that you condemn yourself. But that if you fall, you're able to get up and keep pressing toward the mark. How long do you press? Until you continuously bring forth good fruit. And don't fall for the uh, uh, fictitious that is not possible, that nobody can do. If it wasn't possible, we would have been given a direction. Glory be to his name. Let's tell the truth. If it wasn't possible, he wouldn't give us the direction. You can do this because he writ wrote it in the scripture. Okay? 17, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. We're talking about a lifestyle now. You cannot constantly bring forth evil fruit as a way of living, a habitual way of behaving, and then call yourself a member of the call of the chosen. It does not work that way, my friend. All you're doing is bringing the kingdom to an open shame, okay? That doesn't work that way. I know they want, to, want you to believe that in these local congregations, but don't fall for that. 18, a good tree cannot, did you see that? A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. If the root is good and the tree is good, the fruit will be good. If a tree says that it's good and it brings forth evil fruit, it's still no good. Do you understand what I'm telling you today? Don't fall for the outside appearance if the fruit is not good. The fruit must be good coming forth from the tree. Okay? So 19 says, Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. This is what the Messiah is going to do. He's going to cast it down by the power of Yahuwah, and they're going to throw it into the fire. And that's what we need to do in these last days, those of us that are truly called and chosen. My friends, it's time to step up and be righteous in the kingdom and be fruit inspectors. And let's get rid of these false teachers. Be empowered, my friends. See you.